Hello students, this will be the third and final section of our chapter 8 notes dealing with the progressive era. This leads us into a discussion of the Square Deal, which of course was Teddy Roosevelt's legislative agenda. Teddy Roosevelt was the 26th President of the United States and perhaps has a resume uh, almost unmatched by any U.S. President before or since. Uh, he graduated from Harvard with honors in 1880. He served in the New York State Assembly for three years, served as a New York City Police Commissioner for three years. Now, uh, much of his uh, drive for accomplishment and his famous athletic prowess is due to the fact that as a child, he was very, very ill uh, with asthma and a very weak child. And his father built him actually a gymnasium inside their New York City mansion and urged Teddy Roosevelt to work hard to exercise, to lift weights, and build his body and mind to become strong. And many think this is a reason why he had such a drive for success and athleticism in his adulthood. During the Spanish-American War, he resigned as the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, which was a civilian job, to form the Rough Riders, which was a group of college athletes, miners, and ex-soldiers uh, and cowboys during the Spanish-American War. And he, of course, won the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroism at the Battle of San Juan Hill during this war. Uh, incidentally, also later won the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating a peace uh, during the Russo-Japanese War. He was also at one time the governor of New York, and in 1900 was picked as uh, President McKinley's running mate and became president after McKinley was assassinated. Now, I mentioned the square deal. The goal of this was to keep the wealthy and powerful from taking advantage of the poor. It was Teddy Roosevelt's plan to look out for the common man, the working man. <clears throat> Some examples of this are the Hepburn Act and the Meat Inspe Inspection Act. The Hepburn Act gave the government the authority to set and limit shipping costs, specifically aimed at the railroad companies. The Meat Inspection Act gave federal agents the power to inspect meat sold across state lines. Now, this is, of course, passed be, uh, in large part due to the uproar caused by Upton Sinclair when he wrote The Jungle, which was discussed in an earlier section of this video. Now, an interesting point here is that they could only inspect meat sold across state lines because the Constitution gives the government the authority to monitor only interstate commerce, not intrastate commerce. So business conducted across state lines is open to federal scrutiny, whereas business conducted within a state's boundaries is not. Also, the Pure Food and Drug Act, which bans shipment of impure foods and mislabeling of food and drugs, which is the reason why when we eat, when we eat food today, when we consume food bought at a fast food restaurant, a, a sit-down restaurant, a grocery store, we are confident that the food is safe and clean. Roosevelt also focused on helping the environment. One reason is because he admired the naturalist John Muir. And during his presidency, saw, he oversaw the closing off of over 100 million acres of forest land. Now, this sprang from uh, a love that Teddy Roosevelt had as a child of taxidermy. He would fill his uh, boyhood home where he grew up, his mansion, with uh, animals that he had uh, collected and and stuffed and gone through the taxidermy process and created essentially his own little uh, museum within his home. This was a hobby of his, of his as a boy. We have also passed during this time the National Reclamation Act, which said the federal government could decide when and where water was distributed. Now, when Roosevelt left office, he essentially handpicked Robert, uh, I'm sorry, William Taft to be uh, president in 1908. Now, Roosevelt had expected Taft to follow his policies. However, Taft as president did not. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt then began touring the nation promoting what he called New Nationalism, which was his new program to restore the government's trust-busting power. He said Taft, whom again he thought would follow his policies, had betrayed him and betrayed the public, and he would correct the wrongs that had been done during the Taft administration. This brings us to the 1912 election. Teddy Roosevelt failed to win the Republican nomination, so he broke from them and formed his own party, which he named the Progressive Party. Now, the Progressive Party was later nicknamed the Bull Moose Party. 
during this can during the campaign uh, for this election, Teddy Roosevelt was asked about his health and his age, and whether or not he was uh, young enough and healthy enough to participate in this campaign. And he responded, "My friend, I am as fit as a bull moose." Hence the nickname Bull Moose Party. So this sets up a three-tiered election where we have Taft, Wilson, and Roosevelt. Now because Teddy Roosevelt split the Republican votes, Wilson was able to win the election in 1912. Wilson's legislative agenda was known as New Freedom, and its goal uh, was to place strict controls on corporations, again looking out for the common man, the working man. Another progressive amendment we'll mention, which was passed during the Wilson administration, was the 16th Amendment, which created the income tax, made it uh, constitutional. Uh, the income tax, by the way, was installed earlier times in history, including during the Civil War. Uh, this made it officially constitutional, and the Underwood Tariff put the income tax in place. The Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913. Also under uh, Wilson's watch, this placed all banks under the control of a Federal Reserve Board. We also have the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, which would look out for businesses that were creating monopolies and stop them. The FTC, of course, is still around today. Also, the Clayton Antitrust Act, which strengthened earlier antitrust laws, including uh, the uh, laws that were passed during the late 1800s, such as the Sherman Antitrust Act. Workers' Comp was created in 1916. That it gave wages to temporarily disabled government workers. Again, this is another program that is around today. Now, the legacy of progressivism is that the federal government began helping people in their private lives, which can be seen in the previous uh, three or five slides that we just saw, the laws passed to look out for the common man and to place controls on large corporations. Also more regulation of environment, as we saw with exemplified with Teddy Roosevelt's uh, dedication to closing off land and preserving uh, land within the United States. And this concludes our flipped video on the progressive era. Thank you for watching.